What's up guys, this is Akash and welcome to your second Spark tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to explore what is Apache Spark and how does it function. Now, we are going to move into programming part, uh, but not this tutorial. Uh, I just want you to understand how does Spark function and basics of Spark before we do that. So don't get panicked. So. Before we move into what is Apache Spark, I just want you to explain what is big data. Now, there are many, many different definitions out there, which by the way, all of them are true, but I just want you to get a new perspective before you move into the world of big technologies, big data technologies. So what is big data? Well, according to me, the term big data varies from professional to professional. So if somebody is a historian, then big data for him could be in terms of 4,000 rows or 5,000 rows. But if someone is computer scientist, then big data could be in terms of petabytes or even zettabytes. So uh, just understand that big data is a broad term and uh, it could vary from person to person. Now let's move on to Apache Spark. So the Spark was created at AmpLab which is uh, located in University of Berkeley, California. And the main reason why Spark was created was to overcome the drawback of Hadoop. Now, if you don't really know a lot about Hadoop, don't worry about it because it's not a prerequisite for these tutorials, but just understand how Spark differs from other big data technologies out there and um, what was the underlying motive behind the creation of Spark. So Hadoop is a framework just like Spark to process data in parallel manner uh, to get the results back. So the reason why Hadoop was created was that there were massive amount of data set and one wanted to write a big query, huge query on this massive data set and get, an, uh, get the answer back and it was virtually not possible to um, execute this query on a single computer because it took extremely lot amount of, uh, extremely lot amount of time excuse me if, is that even a term but yeah whatever it took a lot of time to execute that query um, so they decided to come up with a framework a parallel framework that could execute the code in parallel manner simultaneously and finish the job much quicker and that's how Hadoop was born and uh, the main motive behind creation of Hadoop was to do this batch processing so nobody cared how long it took as long as it was a reasonable amount of time what is reasonable amount of time well it could be like weeks but not like months, at least a week is a okay time to, uh, to do a batch processing on a data set. And uh, so yeah, so, so they wrote uh, this uh, program which could run on thousands of computer and process the data set in parallel manner. But it turned out that one of the major issue with writing the program in parallel manner was the issue of fault tolerance. So fault tolerance is an issue where one of the computer fails and you, 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 you just want to recover from that failure without affecting the output of the program. So it doesn't matter if there was a failure or not failure, it should not affect the output of the program. So to overcome the issue of failure, uh, Hadoop decided to write all the data set into disk. Why disk? Well, if you write the data set into memory in order to speed up the computation, you will not be able to solve the fault tolerance issue. And the reason why you will not be able to solve fault tolerance issue is that if the power turns off, if the node fails, then you just lose the computation on that node because memory is volatile. Volatile means that as soon as the power is gone, you lose everything and you don't have anything as compared to the disk. If the power is off, you just don't lose the data set. And that's why Hadoop decided to write all of its data set into disk 
even the intermediate data set. So yeah, all well and good. Uh, this framework was created and it was working very amazing, very fine. And then one day, a person from AmpLab, which is located in the University of Berkeley, decided to run his machine learning algorithms on Hadoop to speed up the computation. Now, don't worry about it if you don't really know what machine learning algorithms are, but I just want you to know that machine learning algorithms are iterative. Iterative means that it requires a loop, a repetitive operation is being performed down there, like for, you know, i is equal to zero to maybe a thousand. It's a repetitive operation. You're doing the same operation a thousand times. So he decided to, uh, run machine learning algorithm using Hadoop to speed up his computation and what he found out was that machine learning algorithm on Hadoop with certain number of node cluster was slower than his single PC so it's more like saying that Hadoop was running machine learning algorithm using five PC extremely powerful PC computers uh, and the amount of time it took to process the machine learning algorithm using these five computers was more than the amount of time it took to process the same algorithm using a single computer which was just as powerful as each of the computer in the cluster. So he decided to find out more about why this happened and they discovered that one of the reason why this happened was that Hadoop writes down all the data set, all the intermediate results back to the disk, which is a problematic, which slows down the computation time because reading from disk is 10 times slower than reading data set from memory. So what they decided to do? Well, to solve this issue of uh, slow computation for iterative algorithm, they decide to create a new framework, a parallel framework called Spark. And that's how Spark was created. Now, what is Apache Spark? Apache Spark is a parallel framework. Sorry, excuse me. Apache Spark is a framework that is used to process the data set in parallel manner and it hides the parallelism associated with writing the code. So if you are a software developer, you would already know that how many things you need to take into consideration when you write, want to write parallel programming, like you want to synchronize some of the critical blocks and you want to take care of the issue of uh, fault tolerance and so many other issues like load balancing, which, which is just the overhead when you want to write a very simple uh, program to execute on a large data set. So Apache Spark is a framework that hides this all this complexity associated with writing this parallel program. All a engineer needs to do is just give it a task that I want to perform this task on this huge massive data set and it will do it automatically. How does it do that? Well, it just uses n number of computers where one of the computer will act as a master and rest of the computers will act as a slave. Master computer, which is known as a master node, is responsible for taking in the arguments from the user as well as the program from the user and compile that program and break down that program into a small, small chunks, like known as a task, small, small operations. And they're known as a task, and these tasks are being sent to all different slaves. And slaves are also known as a worker, uh, worker nodes, and worker nodes basically perform all the tasks given by master node, and after performing that task, it sends the result back to master node. So if it was an iterative algorithm or maybe an operation that is uh, the same operation, excuse me, the same type of operation that is to be performed on entire data set, 
then you could have a chunk of data set here, chunk of data set here, a chunk of data set here, and a chunk of data set here, and all of them could perform the same operation in parallel manner without being need to be synchronized. And this is the underlying idea behind how Spark works. And Spark basically has this ecosystem where there is this normal Apache Spark. On top of that, they provide another support for Spark SQL, Spark Streaming, Spark Machine Learning, and Graph Export Processing Graphs. We are going to explore all of this in future, so don't worry about this a lot as of now, but just understand that Spark is, as a whole, is an entire ecosystem with which, uh, with, with what you can do basically anything from executing a machine learning algorithm to dealing with streaming of online, like, you know, streaming of data set, SQL and graph processing, extra, 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 and many more. RDT. So, before we talk about resilient distributed data set, uh, understand that Spark stores all of its uh, data into the memory. And remember how we talked about Hadoop storing its data set into disk because storing a data set in memory was a bad idea because if one of the node fails, then you lose entire computation as well as the data associated with that node. So Spark, as it stores the data set into the memory, one would ask, wouldn't it have the same issue? Well, it turns out that it would. So how did Spark overcome this issue? Well, by means of resilient distributed data set and an idea called lazy valuation. What is lazy valuation? Lazy valuation is an idea where Spark does not compute anything unless and until it is absolutely necessary to compute on a data set. And we are going to explore on this idea further in future so don't worry if you didn't really get the concept of lazy evaluation and i'm going to give an example of how spark is lazily evaluated in future tutorial just so that you know that yes it is lazily evaluated now let's talk about rdt rdt is a resilient distributed data set and it is just like a list but the only difference is that this list is a chunked list which means that a part of the list is stored on one node, another part is stored on another node, another part is stored on another node, and so on and so forth. And each of this part is known as partition. So when you when the, when the list is divided into chunks, you basically call it that a list was divided into different different partition. And the number of partition that is generally being performed by RDT is much more than the number of cores that exist in the cluster. Why would you want to have more number of partitions than the number of cores? Well, because if you just have 30 partitions on a 40 core cluster, then you would be wasting 10 cores of resources when you are doing a parallel computation because you can only parallelize it 30 times, like 30, 30 core times. So it could only be executed on 30 cores while 10 nodes sits a 10 excuse me 10 cores sit idle and do nothing so that's why partitions are divided into more number than the core now one one would might ask why not just divide it into the same number as the number of cores so for example if there's a 40 core on a cluster why not just 40 partitions on the data set well, the reason being that some cores might could be much, much faster than other cores. So suppose that the course on computer one doesn't have any work to do, then the amount of time that it would take to process some data set uh, on computer one would be way faster than on computer three, where some work is already being performed and cores are not as free as computer one. And that's why the amount of time it would take to perform some operation on computer three's core would be 
much much more than the amount of time it would take to perform operation on computer one score uh, core so that's why if you have more number of partition than the core suppose like 120 partitions on the core so excuse me 120 partitions on the data set then uh, a computer one could pick up maybe 80 partitions to process while computer three only picks up on 40 partitions to process so that is the reason why you want to have more number of partitions compared to the core um, so let's talk about how this data set is distributed this is a picture which shows how this resilient distributed data set is distributed amongst partitions suppose you have this big data where you have six rows which is very huge big data um, it's, it, it gets divided into three partition where row number one and two is on partition one row number two sorry three and four is on partition two and row number five and six are on partition three and so this is rdd that this this entire thing is an rdd which is partitioned into three partitions so uh, that's it for this tutorial we are going to explore more on apache spark in future tutorials uh, but i do really want to get started on programming from the next tutorial so stay tuned and if you didn't really understand any concept then comment below thank you